Um, hello, hi, I'm Peter Vax. I will be teaching you 4151 uh, membrane transport. I'll be teaching this uh, with the assistance of a teaching assistant by the name of, of uh, Rebel Yashif. Um, I'm really looking forward to this uh, course. I've uh, taught it once before uh, last year, um, and I took it over from uh, Dr. Paluzzi, um, who uh, taught it for a number of years. Uh, it was a seminar course, um, so there were group presentations and whatnot. I elected not to uh, use that format um, because the objectives, uh, as far as I'm, uh, for me teaching this, is that you develop an understanding of kind of the language and the principles of membrane transport. The net result of that, though, is that we're going to delve a little bit into some areas where some of you might actually be uncomfortable. Uh, and specifically, we're going to talk a little bit about biophysics and chemical kinetics. And the reason I believe that needs to be done is because to truly get an idea of transport um, processes uh, broadly uh, with membranes as well as in uh, systems, not necessarily uh, membranes. There's a certain uh, level of understanding of some basic physical principles that are actually necessary. Um, now, if we were just stuck with vesicular transport and the transport of large proteins, we could stick to uh, biochemistry, uh, but we're not going to do that. We're actually going to talk about the movement of water ions coupling between uh, different uh, uh, transport processes. And so this sort of pulls us into a more biophysical approach. Now, uh, I don't want to scare you off. Uh, I can tell you last year I started with about 50 students and I believe about 30 or so ended up uh, finishing the course. Uh, the good news was that uh, I had an exceptional group, actually. They were very enthusiastic overall. Um, they gave me lots of feedback, and on the basis of that feedback, I've actually modified or am going to modify uh, my presentation sequence, um, as well as uh, the types of things I'm actually emphasizing in the way I'm presenting some of the material. Um, having said that, uh, I can tell you that uh, as well, uh, and it will be the case this time, it's a fourth year course. It's going to be a rigorous course. It's going to require a fair bit of work, uh, I believe. Um, certainly, I think the students last year uh, found it uh, to be a bit more work than the average fourth year course. Despite that, uh, I think about half of the class ended up with an A average uh, or an A grade. Uh, and that's for my fourth year courses. Uh, that's typically what I actually strive for. Um, now, um, I think that um, what happened last year was that uh, most of the very, very good students stuck it out and those that weren't necessarily compatible with my teaching style and uh, the more uh, physical, biophysical approach uh, dropped the course. So I thought that, that the actual mark, I had to justify it actually to the department in the end. Um, and that's how I did that. Okay, so um, I'm going to look, this is my first online course. Uh, and uh, like last year, when I relied on students to give me feedback in terms of the way I was teaching the material, uh, I'm going to rely on you for that information and that feedback, but also um, feedback on the way I'm doing my um, e-learning, how I'm de delivering these lectures online. Um, I hope it's a positive experience for you. Um, I'm a little intimidated, frankly. I, I actually much prefer the excitement of actually standing in front of people and delivering uh, information and having a two-way um, interaction. I'm going to try to maintain that in, the, uh, in this course. The way I'm going to do that is when I have uh, synchronous le lessons, um, lectures, and I will talk about synchronous and asynchronous in a moment. Uh, but when we're engaged and actually everyone uh, is expected to attend, there will be um, regular stoppages in the lecture where I will uh, entertain questions and we can uh, have dialogue at that point. I'll come back and talk again about synchronous versus asynchronous. Um, and I guess the only other thing I will tell you is that I've been uh, working in the area of 
sort of membrane uh, transport uh, since about 1987. Um, that's a long time, right? I'm pretty old, um, and there's uh, no question that, of, that, that that's correct. Um, and what I have seen and witnessed and had the pleasure of actually witnessing is um, several Nobel Prizes actually being awarded uh, for membrane transport in the area of uh, membrane biophysics um, since that time. Uh, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the work of those particular individuals. And we've actually seen in the last five years or so a complete sort of revamping of the field. Um, and as I said, I've been working in this field for a long time. And in about 2005, or a little bit before that actually, I more or less stopped working in the area of membrane biophysics and membrane transport. And the reason for that was because, you know, uh, and I'm going to tell you about sort of that little bit of the history of this field uh, in this course. Um, the situation was that we were uh, doing lots of things in the, uh, using the tools of molecular biology where we could actually, uh, you know, manipulate genes, we could do mutagenesis, we could look at transport properties. Um, but the problem was that, for example, I worked in the sodium channel uh, for a number of years, 2,000 amino acids, try to figure out what, you know, one region versus another is actually doing, um, you know, in terms of, of transport processes and, and the control of those. I got frustrated with the lack of a crystal structure. Uh, and more or less right around the time that actually I made that decision was when the first sort of biologically, truly biologically relevant uh, crystal structure came out for the uh, a type of uh, inward rectifying potassium channel. And uh, things progressed very, very slowly after that. Uh, but now there's literally a structure or two coming out every week. Um, as of 2014, uh, there was about 500 structures of uh, known membrane proteins. Um, very few of them actually uh, highly relevant for the area that I work in. Uh, that number has exploded since 2014, and I'll tell you about why that has happened uh, in this course, and we'll talk a little bit about that. But it's very exciting because now the things that we speculated on, you know, for the past uh, 30, 40 years in terms of how channels and how transport occurs, uh, first of all, it's turned out that many of those ideas turned out to be correct. But now we can actually directly link the properties of transport processes and, and transporters to their structure. Uh, and I find that extremely uh, um, satisfying. And it's going to open up a new revolution in the field. So, so uh, and I'll tell you about that, but it's, uh, and I'll give you a little hint now. Um, what normally one would have be, be doing in uh, the laboratory to figure out, for example, specificity of a drug um, or developing a new drug, uh, a lot of that's now being done in silica. And, uh, and the reason is because there's structures for virtually every kind of uh, protein that you might want to target a drug for. Um, so anyway, we'll talk about that as well. Um, and so I guess the, the bottom line is it's a very exciting time for me and I hope to be able to transmit that excitement um, to, to you uh, during the, during the uh, course of, of this um, semester. Um, Okay, so let me just now um, uh, pull up my screen, share my screen, and talk a little bit more specifically about the, the lectures and the material that we're actually going to be covering. Um, and I, in order to do that, I actually need to uh, sh uh, share the screen. Um, and um, hmm, okay, so I'm uh, having a little bit of trouble seeing what I need here on my system. Um, gosh. Okay. Okay, so let me actually uh, just share my screen with you. Oops, I uh, uh, blew it again here. Let me try this again um, and share screen with you. And then we can sort of talk through, um, we can talk through this uh, process, uh, you know, some more information related to the course. So let me just pull this up. Okay, so, um, so that's my name there. Uh, I hope you can see that. I'm assuming that you can. That's my room number, not that that's particularly relevant at this point. 
um, and my email address. And so you can uh, feel free to email me anytime. I try to respond to students the day they um, send me an email. Uh, if I don't, sometimes uh, you fall off the charts uh, and I miss it and uh, send it again if I don't respond within 24 hours. And we're, I'm certainly happy to um, Zoom or Skype with students as we, as we move forward, but I'd ask that you actually uh, take the, um, uh, that we do this by appointment um, and not haphazardly. So if you email me, um, we can set up an appointment to uh, talk, uh, you know, one on one. I really do prefer, though, if you articulate your question as carefully as you can by email. And the reason I, I prefer that for students is because um, if you're having a problem with something, you, one of the students, um, I can assure you that there are other students who are having the same problem. So what I like to do actually is to take um, questions that are uh, pitched my way, um, write as thoughtful a response as I can. They're often very thorough. Um, and then I will reply to you by email. Uh, but then I will often, and very often, actually, most of the time, I will post your question uh, along with the answer so that we can share uh, that with others. Uh, I'm going to set up a discussion group. I'm hoping Robel will help us uh, to, to do that. Um, and there's Robel there, by the way. Um, he took the course last year, uh, was an excellent student. I quite enjoyed having him in the class. Um, and that's his email address. He will be primarily dealing with the problem sets, um, marking and um, helping me deliver those. Um, and we'll come back to sort of how we're going to approach that in, uh, in, just, uh, in just a bit. So I've talked a little bit about uh, the biophysics and my approach. Um, there's the course description. This is actually on the website. This is in the syllabus. And you can see um, what I stated there. And we're going to go with a lot of fundamental concepts. We're going to stick to the molecular aspects of, uh, of sort of transport. Um, and you see there I wrote biophysics. But in fact, I'm really, I was trained initially actually as a, as a physicist. Um, and so that's my sort of tendency is to go there. Uh, but over the years, I've actually learned uh, about the power of a number of sort of biochemical approaches to understanding um, uh, various aspects of physics and chemistry. And I will be very, very much focused on a biochemical approach um, as, I, as I deliver my, my lectures. And you'll see that I will constantly be, ver be using the term a biochemist view of membrane transport. And it turns out that that view is um, very sound. It actually has a uh, solid basis in, uh, in fundamental physics. And so um, that's, that's the way I'm going to teach it. And I think it resonates much more um, with students uh, taking a biochemical approach rather than, you know, solving continued, you know, continuous partial differential equations. We're not going to go down that road. Um, I will mention them as we go because there's a lot strong and a large history uh, in this particular area. Okay, so uh, that's sort of the, the, the course uh, description, the sort of basis or the, the uh, um, summary. Um, so we're going to have lectures on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And when I first put this syllabus together, I said and I felt I was going to do a mixture of synchronous and asynchronous. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, I plan actually to eventually um, do the following, and that is to deliver my lectures asynchronously. So in other words, I will put together a lecture. Let's say it's, uh, and they're going to be numbered, lecture one, two, three, four. Um, and when we get to, so let's say, lecture five, I will pre-record a lecture to the best of my ability. Uh, and I will post that prior to the actual date um, that was uh, assigned for that particular lecture. Let's say it's lecture four. And then during the time, uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, uh, related to that lecture, I will review what's in the asynchronous lecture. I'll sort of deliver the lecture, uh, so to say, a second time, but with much more of a focus on um, interactive um, 
uh, as much as I can to have uh, interactions uh, with, uh, with students. Um, and the nice thing about doing it this way, I, I think, so this is what I'm planning to do. Uh, the more I think about it, the more I think this is the way to deliver this course. Um, I'm going to, um, you know, once I put together uh, the lecture uh, and it'll be posted on Moodle, it'll give me a, little, a day or two to reflect on the way I've done the lecture. And then during the synchronous times, I will try to sort of fix or correct or, or modify, um, uh, you know, um, and emphasize aspects of that particular lecture. Um, the synchronous lectures, therefore, are unlikely to be an hour and a half long if, I, if, I, if we do it this way, where it's an asynchronous followed by a synchronous. Um, and hopefully we'll spend most of the time actually discussing um, aspects of that particular lecture, let's say it's lecture four, or entertaining questions related to previous lectures, whether they were delivered synchronously or asynchronously. Um, either way, I'm going to actually um, try to post well in advance um, the, the, the plans for that particular week. So in other words, on Sunday uh, or so, probably around Sunday, I will, I will upload uh, the lecture for Tuesday. Uh, and if I've done that, then the plan on Tuesday will be to give a synchronous lecture um, to discuss the topics again, um, um, maybe not quite as, in, as much detail as the asynchronous lecture and then to spend some time during that time, during that lecture time, dealing with questions and clarifications where people might have looked at the asynchronous lecture. Uh, there'll also be notes that are posted that you should be using to follow along uh, the, the lectures, whether they're synchronous or asynchronous. Now, here's where I'm gonna give you some advice. Um, I get complaints every year from students, regardless of what course I teach. Um, and I've been teaching uni university level courses for over 30, uh, how many years now? 35, something like that. Um, and um, I sort of pride myself in having decent notes uh, that really cover the material in a comprehensive manner. I always get complaints from students saying his notes were a mess. Um, and they are, they will be a mess if you don't keep up. Right. If you don't, if you do not spend the time to look at my lectures as we go along, uh, I can see that you can get confused um, because the way I design my courses is that I clarify lots of things that are actually in the lectures, um, uh, in the lecture notes during lecture time. And I therefore often, depending on the questions that get asked, I will actually follow up with a modified lecture. So in other words, I'll go back a lecture note. And so I'll go back and modify my lecture. So there's now sort of two copies of the same lecture. I always thought that was helpful. And it is, I believe, for most students. But I always have a subset of students that uh, bitch, uh, complain um, uh, vehemently that that's uh, you know, confusing, um, et cetera. But I'm going to continue to do it that way. Uh, you can. You know, we'll see where the chips fall, and you can let me know uh, with your feedback as to um, uh, uh, whether that works. Um, and it might actually work more effectively um, with an e-learning uh, process. Um, the other thing is that I've decided, as you as we'll see in a moment. Um, well, let me just wait and 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 uh, tell you about that in, in just a moment. Okay. Um, all right. So I think I've covered that material there. So let me move to the next slide. So yeah, here we, here we go. So um, this is how we're going to be doing the, the assessments uh, for the course. I've already mentioned that I anticipate that about half of you will end up with an A grade. Probably about 10% will be an A plus. I believe that's about what it was last year. Um, and so, I, but I've changed very much the assignment, uh, the mark assignments uh, this year relative to last. And part of that is because of the e-learning. Um, but I had about 30%, I had a 30% homework assignment um, evaluation last year and uh, for four homework assignments. Those are critical for me to get you on board in terms of thinking about problem solving and um, generally how to think about problems. 
Uh, some of the material that's actually in the homework assignments will not really be directly covered in detail in the lectures, but I have, there's enough guidance in the homework assignments that you should be able to complete them. I think they should be fun, actually. Um, I'm hoping they are fun. The first one is actually going to deal with something um, that's very fundamental, and that's just, you know, how do you figure out what the energy of, you know, a molecule is? And, and not exactly, but, but you know, how, how, how do we think about these? Um, and it, it com with complete focus on relevance to, uh, to membrane transport. And uh, this is going to take a little bit of work. I'm going to actually ask you in the first assignment, for example, to uh, surf the web a little bit and find a little bit of information that way. Um, I think it's going to be no problem. You are all very, very um, uh, familiar with finding information on the web. And so um, I don't have any qualms about, about forcing you to do that in my course. Um, now, uh, I expect that you all will be working together collectively to some extent, depending on your, you know, various uh, friendships uh, and partnerships within the, within the class. You'll be doing these together. Um, I always notice when that happens because people will go down the wrong track and I'll notice that there's like 10 people that have, you know, uh, approached the problem uh, from, a, from, a, from a standpoint that I wasn't expecting. Um, but anyway, the homework assignments will, will be very good I, uh, for you. I think they'll, they'll be hopefully very helpful to solidify some of the uh, material in the course. Uh, literature review, there'll be some information posted later, and there's some in the syllabus telling you about what that entails. It's only 10%. Uh, most people get somewhere between 7 to 10 out of 10 on, on the literature review. Um, and it's it's a, it's quite a it'll cover a, a broad range of topics even outside of what's covered in the course. Now here's one of the things I've decided to do, and I don't know how this is going to work. 20% uh, of your mark is going to be four quizzes, um, and I was planning to do that anyway, regardless of e-learning, because I believe that a lot of students don't look at my notes. They come to class. Well, lots of them don't even come to class actually. Um, but uh, I think they don't actually prepare uh, appropriately for my lectures. And uh, they only do so, of course, once, the, um, once they're confronted with the, with the midterm coming up. And in this particular case, it's going to be October the 20th. So what I've decided to do is actually incorporate some quizzes, um, some rapid quizzes. They're going to last somewhere between 15 and, and uh, 20 minutes. Um, and I'll expect you to deliver those, the answers to the quizzes, you know, from the time that I make them available to you. Um, there's going to be a time limit for you to actually de uh, deliver those to me. They're not going to be difficult, um, but they're going to require you to go through the notes, right? There's going to be information that you're going to need. You're going to read through the notes. And that's the way I'm going to force you, so to speak, to keep up with my lecture notes. Um, and that'll help me as well if you give me feedback and say, you know, Dr. Bax or Peter, this is, this is not doing it for me. Um, and I'll go back and rethink maybe how to deliver the information uh, to, to, uh, to the students. I should also say that the very first homework assignment, I recall a very pleasant girl, um, lady in, the, in last year's class who came up to me and after and she said, you know, Dr. Bax, this is just way, way too much physics. Um, way more than I anticipated. And um, I told her in the beginning, we're going to be doing, a, you know, lay down the ground rules and, and, the, and the basis for the material to follow. Um, turned out she got the highest mark in the class, right? So um, despite her misgivings, uh, she, one way or another, uh, managed to uh, understand the material ex exceptionally well. And uh, I quite enjoyed her because she constantly challenged me. And I, I actually prefer that uh, students do that rather than, um, than, you know, wait until after the midterm or after the course. I'd rather hear about my, my, um, uh, my missteps and, and my, um, uh, my problems with the course uh, before the end of the course, hopefully. Uh, and then you'll see there we got a midterm on October 20th. I haven't figured out how to do that yet. Um, you know, that's a whole challenge, obviously, right? Trying to get people to um, 
be completely upfront and honest. Uh, this seems to be a big issue. Uh, I'm, I'm understanding from other people who have delivered already uh, le um, lectures uh, by um, uh, through the web. Uh, and then the final exam is 20%. I, I hope that adds up to uh, 50. I didn't actually uh, double check it, to be honest. Uh, I just did a quick thing in my head, and it does look like it adds up to 100%. OK, and so uh, there you also have uh, the literature uh, reviews, uh, some of the topics that you can think about doing. Uh, as we go through the course, you'll see what those different groupings mean. And I'm open to lots of other suggestions as well. Um, yeah, you should be you should be uh, checking the Moodle eClass website on a regular basis. I don't really know the difference right now between the two. My understanding is they're supposed to be merged together. Right now, that course website that's actually here in the syllabus is not the correct one. It's actually some eClass website. I'll, I'll actually put that put that up. Um, on the website, but obviously, if you've seen the syllabus, you've already uh, you already know how to actually get to the uh, to the course website. Okay, um, and what else can I tell you? Yeah, so the midterm will be uh, an hour and a half long. Um, it'll take the full period uh, on October the twentieth. When I assign the homework assignments, uh, you have two weeks to get them done. Last year, uh, I went a little bit overboard in terms of uh, the amount of questions I put into the homework assignments, and I ended up extending them by a week or two. Um, but this year, I'm going to try to stick as much as possible to the two-week uh, time frame. Um, and I, like I said, I really, really hope you enjoy doing those homework assignments, and I'm happy to uh, help you and be relatively interactive. Um, at, 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 at least at some level. Um, there's some other uh, important dates there, the drop dead date, uh, the drop deadline date uh, for getting out of this course without uh, penalty. Um, and um, yeah, and so let me continue on here. Okay, so uh, recommended uh, textbooks. Uh, I don't have any required textbooks. I'm gonna be taking quite a bit of stuff actually uh, from uh, the book by Stein. Uh, although I'm going to be taking material from all over the place for this course, I will usually reference where I'm taking figures from. Um, I also will be taking stuff from uh, Mary Leckie's uh, book. Um, and that'll tend to be a little bit more in the earlier part of the course. Later on, when we talk about ion channels, uh, I'm going to be delving into Bertel Hilley's book um, called Ion Channels and Excitable Membranes. That is truly the Bible uh, for people working in the field. It's uh, written by a true master uh, of, of uh, membrane transport. Uh, it is an extremely, um, extremely well-written book, uh, but deceptive uh, in the sense that there's not a thing in Bertel Hilley's book that is not you know, absolutely accurate and up to date. Problem is that he seduces you into believing that you fully understand something um, where, while in fact the underlying sort of fundamentals of what he's telling you are very, very deep and, and very um, complicated actually in, 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 in many cases. And Hilly completely understands all of this stuff. Uh, and so he delivers it in a, in a way that is extremely palatable to even people who are not experts in the field. Having said that, people often walk away from, you know, reading a chapter or so of his book and thinking that they truly understand things until they're confronted with an actual problem uh, to solve. And then they realize that, wow, there's a lot more that goes into, you know, uh, some of the statements that he makes than meets the eye, at least initially. But anyway, I would uh, try to get a hold of those books. The library is still closed, so I I've actually put in a request for these books to be put on hold. I don't know if that's of any value to you. Um, otherwise, um, I have um, I've ordered a copy of Stein's book. Uh, I had a copy that disappeared from my shelves uh, actually over the summer, um, and I don't know where it went. Uh, so I'm or I've ordered another one. 
Um, but I know what's more or less in that book, and my notes from last year have relied a fair bit on Stein's book. He's, he's, an, he's an excellent teacher. Um, yeah, so, so that's the material. Uh, a, a lot of stuff, though, I'm telling you right now, is on the web, right? Look around when Bax says something and it's not 100% clear. Um, that's either one of two things. I don't understand it 100% uh, or I don't know it that well. Uh, so, so, you know, try to supplement um, what I am delivering in class with um, stuff that's on the, on the web. <clears throat> Uh, I'll tell you that my strength is is ion channels, um, and there's we're going to delve into some other areas, uh, particularly the structure of membranes and some transport processes that don't involve ions and, and charge coupling. Uh, these are areas that are outside my comfort zone. Uh, I'm going to teach them anyway, and I think it's important to teach it because just for completeness purposes, and as time goes on, we're learning more and more really about those kinds of processes. So I will touch on them. I think it's going to be maybe one or one and a half lectures on things like, um, you know, uh, synaptosomes and uh, vesicular transport. I'll talk a little bit about cavioli, um, you know, clethrin uh, pits. Um, and a few things like that. And you can see I'm already hesitating just off the top of my head. Um, you know, reciting the kinds of, um, of stuff, but um, but we will touch on that, and then we will delve into uh, a lot more of the principles for a while, and then we'll go for more than half the course is going to be dealing with um, structures of of transporters and how that structure relates to uh, to function. Um, and then there's the uh, Moodle discussion board. I, I'm going to try to set something up on the E-class so you can all uh, discuss these things. I'm actually going to get Robel to, to do this for me. Um, I'm not particularly adept at, uh, at a number of these things. Um, and I don't really want to spend a whole lot of time doing it. Okay, um, there's stuff about monitoring. I'll leave that to Robel to, uh, to, to, to do the monitoring. Um, one thing is though that uh, the, I forgot to mention that the links to the lectures will be posted on the e-class. Um, the only way you will be able to get into the lectures, by the way, uh, the synchronous lectures is when, uh, by giving your full name. Um, and I will be, be providing a password for all of these. Uh, for all the lectures, whether they're synchronous or asynchronous. I wish I could back up now and, and uh, because I forgot to mention that. So um, just to reiterate, um, to be able to join a synchronous class, you need to uh, put in your full name. Uh, I'm going to provide a password and a link, a Zoom link, to allow you to get access uh, through Zoom uh, to the lecture itself. Um, and then similarly, uh, you will need You'll be able to access the asynchronous lectures on the website along with the with the uh, with the lectures. Okay, so sorry, I'm jumping around a little bit here. So, um, okay, and then the kind of stuff we're specifically going to cover. I sort of jump back and forth here. Um, is listed here. So we're going to talk first about membranes, and I'm just going to tell you what they are. Uh, you're very familiar with these ideas already. I'm going to bring out some aspects of their structure that relate to their function and to their and related to their biochemistry. Uh, and then we're going to talk about the consequences of the structure of the membrane. That gets us a little bit into the principles, right, of what's hydrophobicity, what's hydrophilicity, uh, why some things go across membranes and some don't, um, why in some cases you need specialized transport systems and in other cases you don't. Um, and what we're going to, you know, focus on primarily are uh, the biophysical concepts, and they're really we're going to use the biochemist version of these. Um, and uh, so we're going to cover some aspects of energetics, um, which of course is 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 critical for all of chemistry, physics, and biology. Um, and what this is going to lead us to very quickly is very early on is a discussion of diffusion, which is effectively, you know, sort of the basis of thermodynamics, really. I mean, it's the, 
it's the thing that's driving change um, and dynamics. That's why it's called thermal because it's uh, coming from our concept of temperature and temperature turns out to be, as we're going to start talk about, is just kinetic energy. Uh, you know, and kinetic energy, as you know, is associated with motion, right? So we're going to touch down on, uh, on spending a bit of time talking about diffusion. Uh, and along the way, we're going to introduce concepts of state diagrams and kinetic chemical kinetic theory. Most of you will have had this before at some level. Um, the level at which we're going to uh, delve into this is going to be very um, minimal. Uh, but the ideas are the things that I'm going to try to get across to you. Um, and we're going to eventually touch down on ideas of transport coupling. And it turns out that thermodynamically, there's a guy by the name of Onsager who won the Nobel Prize. I can't remember exactly in the 60s. He did his work in the 30s, um, where he had a very developed the general formalism for transport coupling. And I'll mention that because a lot of uh, devices that we use today, like thermocouples, Peltier devices, a uh, number of these, um, of these, uh, um, um, of these uh, technologies, are based, in fact, uh, on on Sager's ideas. You know, the idea that you can pass current through a crystal and make the crystal change its size is used as a piezo control system, right, for controlling robots and controlling the motion of fine movements of, uh, of, various, um, uh, of, of, of various machines. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, and then we're going to go in sequence uh, through different kinds of transports. We're going to start with the aquaporins, which are the water channels. Uh, we're going to then segue into ion channels, which is the area I'm the most comfortable with. Um, and then we'll talk about ion, uh, ion exchangers, like sodium calcium exchanger, and there's a, a lot of these, the sodium proton exchanger. Sodium is going to come up repeatedly because the gradient of sodium across the membrane is actually a you know, stored energy that's used by a number of transport systems. And th that implies, right, that there's coupling of transport. So the movement of sodium is coupled to the movement of lots of other, other things. Then we'll touch and talk about uh, ATP powered pumps. That's sort of what sets everything up in the first place to allow things to happen. Uh, and, then, uh, and then we're going to end, uh, and I hope we get here, and this is going to be a little bit full circle because we're going to talk about ABC transporters. And these are transporters that have, are, um, are these proteins that sit in membranes that, that, you, that transport large cargo, like large, you know, chemicals. Um, uh, not proteins, but relatively large biochemicals uh, across across cell membranes. And there's a there's a large large class of these uh, proteins. And overall, I, I'll just mention that 20% of the entire genome, uh, probably actually close to 30% of the genome, is actually encoding for proteins that are uh, involved in some membrane process or some aspect of, of membrane function. So that gets you an, gives you an idea of how important membranes are. And we're going to really start on that note uh, when we begin the lectures. OK, and um, yeah, so that's not really relevant. I sort of covered that. So OK, so let me stop my sharing here if I can. I don't know if I can. Let's see here. Okay, so now I finally have figured out how to actually stop sharing my screen. Um, okay, so that's sort of it for lecture one. Um, this is really the syllabus. I will be uploading uh, lecture one notes, which is really just the four or five slides that I actually discussed. Uh, at the end of this coming week, um, I will already be posting the first homework assignment. Um, and I'm just trying to formulate a little bit how to to mesh it in with um, with the other homework assignments in the in the course material. So it, it, I mean we're going to be getting a little bit ahead of ourselves in the first homework assignment. Um, 
but as I said, I'm not going to cover a lot of the material. This is something that for you to look up. It's not difficult, uh, and I do, again, hope you enjoy it. Uh, and then finally, there will be a synchronous lecture of the, covering the material I've just covered in this lecture, which is asynchronous and will be put up on the, well, when you get it, it'll have been put up on the website, obviously. Um, but I will be repeating much of this and have an, a question and answer period in that synchronous uh, 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 lecture. And, uh, and I guess the last thing I'll mention is that uh, keep on top of the, uh, of the course announcements. Um, I will be, you know, giving you updates on a regular basis. I haven't quite figured out how to organize the, uh, the Moodle site yet um, for the purposes of, uh, you know, separating the question and answers from, you know, just sort of uh, admin related stuff with the course. Uh, but I'm going to try to separate those. And so there'll be sort of an admin announcement area, hopefully, um, where you'll be getting on a weekly basis sort of the plans for that week with, with you know, instructions for where the notes are, uh, where the links are for the various, um, uh, the Zoom links and, and whatnot will be uh, provided there along with the passwords, et cetera, uh, and any other instructions that are actually required. So, all right. So uh, I talked a lot, a lot more than I thought I would. Um, I'm sort of talking to myself, right? So it's a, a little odd for me. But um, anyway, I look forward to um, interacting with you. And uh, hopefully you find this course um, of some value at the end and uh, that you enjoy um, not just the material, but me as a professor as well. It's always nice to uh, feel like you're having some positive uh, impact uh, in the world. So. Anyway, talk to you soon, and uh, I'm going to stop recording now, and um, uh, wish you the best. See you soon. Bye.